Hey guys, Julia here. Welcome back to another video. And today I'm setting up January in my new bullet journal. I'm really excited to get cracking in this new journal. All the initial Bujo spreads are ready to roll. There's a video for those already in the cards and down in the description if you haven't seen it yet. But yeah, today is all about January and I'm doing this really delicate blue monochromatic ribbon vintage stamp wintry cloudland <laughs> theme that I am pulling out the paints for this month. So hopefully you'll find some inspiration here for your own journal or just enjoy watching this come together. Of course, I'm gonna start us off with the cover spread. So the first thing I'm going for here is the January title. For this, I don't have a super specific font reference, but the lettering category would be considered a condensed or narrow sans serif. This just means the letters are closer together than its normal width. If this was actually a font and not just me doing some lettering, of course. But yeah, use the Crayola Super Tip to get that all colored in. I'd used a darker blue fine liner to outline it. But other than blues, I'm using a silver paint pen from Artistra. I love how reliable their paint pens are. And also busting out gouache and white for the highlights here. This is like not fancy gouache, I think like Hobby Lobby brand or something, but the consistency isn't bad. But I just mixed up some cerulean blue with white to get this light blue color for the ribbon. And that's just going to twist and turn across the spread here. My general technique for gouache is to block out the colors where I want them and then I use a totally different clean brush with just a little bit of clean water to blend things out a bit. Just like with my non-painting illustrations, I personally enjoy seeing like sketch lines and paint strokes and those humanly qualities, but definitely with painting. So I really didn't go balls to the wall trying to get the smoothest blend ever. Plus it's my bullet journal. I'm not like submitting this to the world fair or anything. So I'm doing the best I can without spending an ungodly amount of time on it, honestly. But yeah, there's a lot of back and forth here, as you can see, as things dry down, the colors change slightly. And I realize there's maybe not enough contrast or separation between the different sections of ribbon. So it's like, I have to decide how much I wanna keep going back and forth at it basically. But the quote is gonna go over on the left and it's gonna be, trust the magic of new beginnings. Just, you know, new year, the unknown, the newness of it all can be overwhelming when hopes are high. So this is just a little reminder to breathe it out, let it ride. And around the quote, I added some horizontal lines of different lengths. You'll see this little element pop up throughout the theme. It reminded me of lined paper without putting in lined paper. So it just adds an easy texture to it all. Now over on the right, I'm gonna build up a texture by layering some hand-drawn elements. And I was really thinking of those collage spreads you see here online, but I wanted to draw everything out. So I'm just starting with this little 23 vintage looking stamp using my blues and then the white paint for the highlights, which ugh, super top notch for highlights. I may have to pull out my gouache more often for this. But under that, I'm drawing in a part of a little ticket sticking out. I love seeing tickets used in journaling. So yeah, hoping that it's gonna be a pretty exciting year for concerts in 2023. So had to put that in there. And then behind that, I'm adding this fancy little double frame with pinstripes. I've been loving like the double frame lately. I don't know what it is, but something about those inset corners, like, yes, please. Yes. So. I have no solid reasoning here for this back section. Just, I like the frame. I needed something to take up space, but not be too distracting. So here we are. But for more layers and more of that scrapbook look, I'm adding in some matching washi and some cute little stickers from Notebook Therapy. Some are from their 2023 Lucky Wish box, which I think are only available during like right before the new year. And then the rose ones you'll see are from their vintage rose washi set, which you can still get right now, I'm pretty sure. But I've been loving those and I like that there's a little something extra that they bring to the spread. But yeah, here is the first monthly cover spread of this journal. We're all broken in. All 
All right, here's another look at the cover spread, but flipping over, I'm getting going on my monthly calendar. If you're new to my monthly setup videos or haven't come to hang out in a while, I'm now a vertical calendar girly. And I'm also a girly who uses a ruler, but still gets wonky lines. So welcome. <laughs> no, but I don't know what that's about. But yeah, the calendar, it works vertically instead of horizontally. And I love that it only takes up one page most of the time. This month, January 1st is on the left, but small price to pay. I love that I don't have to turn my journal to the side or anything, I just love it. I'm painting another ribbon, weaving its way through the spread using the same sort of technique you saw on the cover spread. But yeah, you can definitely see how choppy the colors look before I go in with that clean, damp brush to kind of buff out those transitions. So yeah, underneath getting in a zero one for the first month and just going over that drop shadow. I didn't love it with this calligraph. So some of the hash marks still stick out, but it's all good. I just like this solid look more than the hash lines. I just wasn't into it. But yeah, adding in some little groupings of lines and those silver sparkles. And then I'm taping up a little section that's actually the same area as the frame on the opposite page. And I'm just using some washi tape for that. But here I'm doing just another quick little painting, getting a darker blue up top, lighter as I work my way down. This is just a little sky cloud scene and really just another one of those quick and easy decorations if you already have your paints out. For the clouds, I'm just dabbing around brush. Think like stippling, but with paint. <laughs> the texture is just a bonus and you could definitely get into some crazy detail with this, but I'm just doing the larger white clouds, added a little blue in there too, just for the tiniest bit of dimension, and then just some smaller little clouds in the background as well. And that's pretty much it for this. Once I pulled away the tape, things were sort of blending together more than I liked. So I did work on a little separation there. And then I got the frame put in as well. The same spot where the frame is on the cover page. So that should be a really fun flip situation. But to sort of finish this one off, I'm adding in the lines, the sparkles and the washi. I also popped in a few more of those vintage looking stickers and that's gonna do it for the monthly calendar spread. I actually love how dreamy this looks. moving along and flipping over the next spread is what I'm deeming the monthly dashboard spread. This will combine a few different sections that I typically span across a few pages. But over the last few months, I kind of whittled things down to what I use the most. So under the January title header here, I have four mini calendar habit trackers where I'll most likely track my reading, physical activity, wedding planning, and something else. Maybe like no spend. It's about time for no spend. I don't know yet. But yes, I am planning an intimate wedding for later this year. Well, next year, super excited. Already unreasonably stressed, but I think that comes with the task at hand. I've slipped up in these videos a few times already and said fiance before. I sent out announcement cards disguised as Christmas cards. So hats off to the folks who sent me messages, you sleuthy detectives, you. There was another subtle inspiration for this light blue theme. The Save the Dates had this sort of light blue theme as well. So I was really excited to get those out and that excitement just bled over to my bullet journal, I guess. But anyway, yeah, middle section is the return of the night log. It's a little different. I'm calling it the media log here and I'll write in what we watch each night. I'll rate it and then I'll write like a one little sentence summary. Um, over on the right, we've got our three monthly task boxes, one for invoices, one for things for Etsy. And I know I wanna update some stickers there I know the bubblegum sheet will get a fun update. The last one is for my focus check-in where I'll check in any progress that I've made regarding those yearly focus areas I've identified before the new year starts. 
Up top, we've got the dashboard header, trying to keep all the letters nice and narrow. And then down below, I'm doing a little peek of a ribbon here with the usual suspects to keep everything nice and consistent. I absolutely love that I only have one sort of functional monthly page to flip to throughout the month, other than the calendar spread, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I loved how this turned out. I think it's a solid layout to keep up with all of my usuals in a more compact space. It was so funny. I went through all of my stationery to find things in this sort of French blue family. Nothing too vibrant, but also not too minty. I was very picky about choosing the color palette for this one. Okay, flipping over to the last spread of this initial setup, the first weekly spread. I've already cut out a little Dutch door and rounded those corners. The first section over on the right here is where my meetings and day specific events will go. This section is typically the first place I look in my journal on a day to day, just because I wanna know pretty much right off the bat if I have any meetings or any time related things going on so I can sort of map out my task list based on how much I already have going on. On. But as you can see, I had another wonky moment there with the ruler, but white gouache to the rescue, we will clean that all up. I've been using daily task lists for the last couple months, so I'm pretty much sold on those. So I'm only doing the first header here for January 1st, but every day I'll just make a new header and pull in those tasks from the task bank each day. I'll get to the task bank here in a second. But on the other side of the Dutch door, I'm making a space for a personal task bank. So this is usually YouTube related stuff or house maintenance to do's that I want to kind of keep separated from the work list, which is typically what fills up my task bank. But for a little decoration, I'm pulling back out the gouache and getting another ribbon going in the corner. By this point, I felt way more comfy with the gouache and this is probably my favorite ribbon out of the bunch. I'm super out of practice, honestly. The last time I've painted was probably a bullet journal video and I probably said in that video, hey, I haven't painted since the last time I did a video. So yeah, I definitely wanna make it more of a practice to paint in the new year because it is really relaxing and I do enjoy it, but man, it's a whole thing to just get out all the supplies, I guess. Anyway, this whole little section is like a little mini recreation or maybe a reconfiguration of the cover page, just kind of squashed. I have a little stamp here, the frame, I'll add in the sparkles, tape, the stickers, all in this little area and it just looks super charming, I think. But yeah, the task bank is gonna go under that and this should be plenty of room for work tasks that come up throughout the week. Again, I'll pull from this task bank when making my daily lists. And let's see, above the personal bank, I'm just adding in some light blue dot grid stickies. I can't remember where I got these. I know somewhere during our Portugal, Spain trip this summer. So you won't find those in the description, but I'll try to hunt down something similar but those will just be for whatever. Quick jot list, or if I need more room in the task bank, hopefully not, but yeah. That's it for this first weekly spread. Follow me over on Instagram if you're interested in how these turn out. I try to post progress in my stories there. Okay, let's take another look at all of the spreads for January. I'm really excited to get all migrated into this new journal now that it's officially ready to roll. Be sure to like the video if you've enjoyed, subscribe so you don't miss the latest. It's about to be flip through season, y'all. But I hope everyone has a fabulous holiday season and I wish the best for you in the coming year. I appreciate you spending some of that time with me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. And if you like this video, here are a couple more I think you would enjoy.